Hello, in today's artist review, I'm going to introduce you to one of my favorite American photographers. His name is Eric Madigan Heck. He was born in 1983 in Minnesota, United States, and still lives and works uh, in America. So um, let's have a look at his first series. Uh, it's a personal series, it's called The Garden. And um, I believe he's been working on it for the past year, maybe a couple of years, um, not 100% sure. But what you will notice right away is his very artistic approach. From an early age, he was exposed to arts. Uh, his mother was also a painter and uh, his parents paid a lot of attention to Eric's art education and he got his first camera at the age of 14, very early, and since then he's been photographing uh, constantly and he uses both digital and analog cameras and he calls himself um, an artist who uses photography, which I find quite interesting because you, as you can already see, his work is very, very painterly, very influenced by uh, some um, painters specifically, some other art, art movements. Um, among his main influences, he actually names the French group of artists working in the end of the 19th century called Lena B. Uh, some of you might have heard about it, some of you might have not, but their work is very sort of, um, it pays a lot of attention to color and form. Uh, it's a, a step towards abstraction and towards something a little bit more conceptual and uh, surrealistic. Uh, so this is already post impressionist movement, so after already all the color, uh, color ideas were established by the Impressionists, um, but they already started working towards simplifying the form, and so you can definitely see this influences in terms of color and shape in Eric's work. And and also other other artistic movements, like for example, I see some surrealistic influences, some romanticism for sure. And so when he talks about his work, actually this is 2018, so two years for sure. See, when he talks about his work, he says that uh, a lot of times his pictures look nothing in the end, nothing like what he photographed in the beginning. So he works and works and works of them, changes color and sort of sort of like a painter approaching his canvas and layering and layering and layering paint and color and trying and experimenting and um, until he finds that perfect combination, the perfect um, dialogue between colors and shapes. And so I think this series and is absolutely exquisite. It's, very special in many ways, it's very intimate, it's very romantic on one hand and then surrealistic on the other hand, it's intimate and emotional and I think it all comes with the help of color but also with his uh, attention to emotion, to the direction of his subject um, to his attention to the body movement, to the hand movement, to you know the all the all the little details of gestures and tilts of heads and things like that. It's very again very inspired by romanticism, by uh, maybe impressionism, post impressionism. So how they how those artists treated their subjects, treated their models, and <clears throat> some of his images are more painterly, the other ones are more um, clean and when you can tell the subjects some of them are more abstract and when he talks about his work he also says that um, he does not believe that people are the most interesting part of a composition. It is more interesting to erase and obscure them, so you will see in many of his images 
people are turning away from the camera or they are in a blurred movement or they are in this body position where they are slightly bending or um, somehow twisting and turning and it's it's really really emotional you know with the help of all these elements and he's a he's a true artist and you can see how much time and attention he spends when he creates all of these compositions and all of these images and um he when he explains about his process he says that it's not just you know being there and then during that perfect moment and taking the picture it's actually a lot of thinking that goes into it and then he only takes his camera and then there's a lot of time that he spends in post-processing uh, so i wanted to also show you um, some other of his work so uh, he does a lot of editorial photography and commercial photography very successfully uh, so one of his um, sort of consistent clients is uh, UK's Harper's Bazaar so you will see his shot a lot of uh, the cover stories for it uh, really utilizing his love for color his love of painterly style for how he directs his models so he stays very true to himself and i think it's very uh, honorable and respectful that you can you know keep your own vision throughout your work and make people who hire you hire you editors or art directors still trust trust you to do your thing and be so good at it that you can you know you, when you are creating a shot on set it may look quite different but they should trust you that you will you will make it you know to your to your highest standard of an artist so really really beautiful work amazing covers obviously he works with really talented teams and he's very careful picking his team members and he has his favorite stylist that he's been collaborating uh, for a long time with and then his commercial work, let's take a look at his commissions. Uh, he's done this shot, his whole body of work for Neiman Marcus. Actually, if you look at his client list, there will be a lot of very big names in fashion like Kenzo and Etro and magazines like New York Times, Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar, like I already mentioned. So, this work is shot in Neiman Marcus uh, series called Art of Fashion in 2012 and it's just so beautiful again with his attention to color he really knows how to use color how to create very strong powerful impactful uh, color compositions so blue and red as you can see in this one and you, you, you can you can see how his mind works if you study long enough his work if you study his um, compositions his framing his uh, direction of his subjects um, it's a lot of attention to detail and how he treats his skin tone for example is also very very recognizable and um, I am always appreciative towards, towards the artists who are able to develop such a distinct style, such a distinct voice and you can recognize them among all the others. If you flip through magazine pages, you will know that is Eric, for example. And then he's also known for his use of nature and I think in fashion photography that there are not so many people that um, use nature so much or, or so uh, uh, so much in love with nature and and also he can be very very graphic with his compositions like for example in this one in this series shuffle at all very very graphic very clean but again very based on color and shape and notice also the skin treatment in this one so he definitely um, is an accomplished artist and uh, has has a very specific developed vision um, 
which we can learn a lot from. And I encourage you to study more of his work, more of his project. He has a lot on his website and it's very, very inspiring and very, very fascinating. And as a final note, I would like to say that um, what I really appreciate Eric for is that he was able to elevate fashion photography to more of a fine art level, to you know break away from that fashion routine of many magazines, of many fashion shoots, and really turn it into an actual art. And he exhibits his art around the world. For example, he, he did a, a big solo show at a very prestigious film gallery in Amsterdam. So do study his work, do follow him, and I hope this was interesting. Follow me, uh, like, and subscribe. Thank you.